In the last few years, trans people in Britain have faced an increasing hostility from the British press and a series of court cases and government decisions which have threatened their rights in law. I wanted to find out why Britain seemed to be so transphobic right now. So I asked three prominent British trans people. Hi there, um, my name is Juno Dawson. I'm the author of the new What's the Tea? And this book is gay. My name is Freddie McConnell. I'm a trans man and a father, and I'm a writer and a journalist. I bought a court case in 2018 to try to be registered as father or parent on my child's birth certificate. At the moment in the UK, trans men can only register as mother. Hi, my name is Azakel. My pronouns are they, them. And I am founder of Black Trans Foundation and we provide um, free therapy for black trans people in the UK. And I'm also a sociology student in my final year at uni. So I just ask you just off the bat, how do you think that transphobia in Britain got to this point? And what is it like to be trans in Britain right now? So right now in the UK, it's really stressful to be trans, it's very disheartening and alienating and confusing, I guess, also, because, you know, we haven't always had this transphobia problem. There hasn't always been a moral panic happening with regards to the existence of trans people. Even in the six years since I came out, you know, I've, I've seen the tone get distinctly worse. I think the British the British public is very afraid of difference um, because if you look at British history and if you look at the press in the 70s and 80s, it was the same articles for gay and lesbian people. And I think that, I know this is quite cliche, but history really repeats itself, which is why it's very terrifying to be a trans person in the UK. It's hard to overstate quite how much the British press fixates on trans people these days. Every week there are new stories in major British newspapers claiming that there is such a thing as a trans lobby, which they claim is silencing its critics, threatening the rights of women and girls, eliminating the existence of lesbians, or even endangering children. The scary thing is, you know, a lot of the, the most vocal transphobes in the UK are, are you know, they're academics or journalists or writers so they can word their transphobia very eloquently and very poetically. There's often a cycle on a weekly basis where the Sunday papers will have a big news story about some new terrible thing that trans people are doing or and so you kind of like gear up to it mentally and you know it's going to come and you know not to go on Twitter on certain days. It's like it really in a way dictates some of the stuff that you do. And so you know people in suburbs and middle England who have never met a trans person, who have never thought about trans people, are being told almost daily by the newspapers that they're consuming that trans people are a concern that they should be concerned about. Transphobia in Britain has found a home not only among conservatives, as in the United States, but even among those who would otherwise describe themselves as feminists like Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling, or even people who write for liberal publications like The Guardian. So these are feminists who don't believe that um, trans women are women, and they don't believe that trans women have a say in the feminist narrative. And I think that's just a case of they are trying to protect and defend this idea of women. But this idea of women only includes one type of woman. And what is your feminist? And I'm not just talking about it excluding trans women. It excludes black women. It excludes disabled women. It excludes queer women. It excludes the varying experiences of what it is to be a woman because you are not this one type of woman. And that's why that kind of feminism is so dangerous because in the name of progress and equality and rights, it actually oppresses and excludes everyone who doesn't fall into that category. This constant negative media attention to trans people reached a new peak when the government proposed reforms to the Gender Recognition Act in 2016. The GRA was originally passed in 2004, and it allowed trans people to change their legal gender and get a new birth certificate. The GRA was seen as the gold standard for trans rights at the time. But today, British trans people and LGBT campaign groups say that it's overly complicated and outdated. 
For example, it requires trans people to submit two years worth of evidence to an anonymous panel, including evidence of medical treatment and a formal diagnosis of gender dysphoria. In 2018, the government decided to hold a consultation to find out if the public thought that trans people should just be able to self-declare their gender on a legally binding form, removing the need for a formal diagnosis and panel approval. And basically, when, when talk started about that and that process started, that it was fairly quickly picked up um, by people who are very much against trans equality as a kind of in, I suppose, to attacking the rights that we had secured in 2004. The process to legally gen uh, change your gender in the UK is archaic. It's outdated, it's humiliating, and it views changing your gender as a medical condition or psychological disorder. Despite the fact that a majority of the general public were found to support self-declaration, the government backtracked and decided to only implement minor changes and the rights of non-binary people, those who neither identify as a man nor a woman, have still never even been considered. So essentially, I am still invisible in this country. I can't change my gender to non-binary, which is what I am. In the last few years, trans people have faced more and more legal and political hurdles. In December last year, the High Court of Justice of England and Wales ruled that children under the age of 16 should no longer be allowed access to so-called puberty blockers, hormones which temporarily prevent the onset of puberty, which allows trans teens to have more time to consider their options. This has brought England and Wales into line with several American states like South Dakota, Texas, and Alabama, where Republican legislators are seeking to block access to puberty blockers for trans kids. And you know, very, very few under 16s are referred to the gender service anyway. But, you know, those kids who thought they would soon be getting hormone blockers and have probably been really hanging on to that reality have just been told, oh, actually, no, we're not allowed to give you hormone blockers right now. So it's it's a really, really scary time. And, and even as a trans adult, you recognise that the courts have such power to make these changes. You know, it, it's quite scary stuff that you sort of feel, well, what if, what if tomorrow a judge in London decides that I'm not allowed medical treatment? How do you hope that Britain moves out of that toxicity and how do you hope the future looks for trans people and how do we get there? There are millions of ordinary Brits who support trans equality, who might know a trans person, or, or if they don't, would support trans equality if they, if they were just told the simple truth and if they were allowed the opportunity to get to know a trans person just as another human being, perhaps not in real life, but you know, on the telly, on the TV. Like they, if people had those opportunities, I think that would go a long way to countering the negativity, because at the moment that's all there is. I don't know why my existence bothers people so much, but if we're not looking at the British press, because the British press can be very questionable, if we're looking at the British public, I do believe that um, they can change. I do believe that there can be adequate support for trans rights. I think it just takes education. You know, it's my hope that trans people will continue to be visible and and people will be able to make up their own minds about trans lives through seeing incredible role models and it sounds banal but my biggest hope is that people will just get bored because do you know what being trans is really dull <laughs> you know i'm gonna go take my dog for a walk and tonight we will watch tv like everyone else you know, I will speak to my mum on Sunday and make a roast dinner. And, and that's what trans life is like. You know, there is no agenda, period. <laughs>